What is the dark night of the soul? If you've wondered that question, want to know what it is? Be sure to watch this video all the way to the end. You did all that to say honey? <laughs> I think I'm about to start talking. Yes, right? honey. Yeah, you're doing like your chi breathing. There. <laughs> breathing. <sighs> yes, honey. Yes, ma'am. Yes, honey. <laughs> there is a term out there that people are using for when they go through a whole bunch of depression and sadness and just really low point in their lives and they call it the dark night of the soul. Do you, or would you please explain what that is? <laughs> yes. Or what it is supposed to be, where it derived from? It's called depression. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's called. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm trying to make light of depression, right? Right. But, um, no, we're, we're not doing that at all. We're just... I don't only say that because, again, there's so many terms that are out there. Mm -hmm. I see it as... You know, <clears throat> you know, I have a degree in organizational behavior. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things they taught us, that they taught us, not thought, they taught us was this: that um, in this world itself, uh, and any economy that you deal with, they put barriers. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the barriers are put there so that people feel entitled to achieve beyond those barriers. Okay. Okay. For example, um, if you want to help heal people, you have to have a medical degree. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there are people that can heal individuals without a medical degree. Right. So why was that put there? that was put there as a barrier to reduce the number of people that can actually claim that they have a medical degree. And by doing that, they can charge more. Uh. It's the same thing for any profession. And the more requirements you have to fulfill, uh -huh. then the more specialized you become. And that also means that makes you more special and you charge more. So these are the things that we learned. And so when we when we look at an organization, we look at it <clears throat> from the standpoint of okay, how are they operating? What are they trying to accomplish? So that's why I look at things different than a lot of people. Okay, so what does that have to do with the dark night of the soul? Well, because it goes back to terms. There's so many terms everywhere, right? There are labels for all kinds of things. Exactly. Anything someone experiences, I feel, especially in the United States because I grew up here, and this is my experience, I feel that people try to put a label on everything instead of just saying, this was my experience. No, they have to put a name to it. I don't know a why. And then there are so many labels for one thing. It's, it's sometimes can be overwhelming to me. So, and that's, <clears throat> that's how I was trying to explain. Okay. That, <clears throat> sorry, because of all these labels, then it becomes confusing for individuals. Okay? A, a simple example would be, and you and I have talked about this, mm -hmm. that um, what's a Reuben sandwich? A <laughs> Reuben sandwich. I learned this from you because I didn't know what it was. It is a corned beef sandwich on rye bread with sauerkraut and French dressing, I believe it is. Okay. So, or Thousand Island dressing. One so why did you say you want a corned beef sandwich? With, with sauerkraut. With sauerkraut. And Swiss cheese. Exactly. Good? Exactly, But yes. people mm -hmm. will call it a Reuben, a Reuben sandwich. And then if you're going to go to culinary school, mm -hmm. you probably have to memorize that name and the ingredients that go with it. Yes. Get it? Yes. Yeah, it's, it, it's just, so it's, here we are in the spiritual realm, or in the spiritual realm, and people are so confused about Whoa, there's this awakening and there's this dark what? Dark night of the soul. Dark night of the soul and they have mm -hmm. all these different things. Well, where I come from, as in the spiritual realm, 
wouldn't have chance for anything like that. Uh, it's just an experience you deal with, and then as you clear karma, those things are handled, and then we teach you how to handle those things. So maybe uh, when someone is going through that depression, we find out what's causing it, right? Mm -hmm. And then by finding out the source, you know, the cause and the source, we deal with that, and then that goes away. Right. Or someone is having some emotional issues going on, so, so, so then we find out what's sort of causing that. Of course, they have to go through different levels of membership first. We don't do that at level one. Right, we don't right? get all the details there, no. no. We don't do that, that's much... It's a very time-consuming process. Exactly. But once they get to that level, then we check for those things, and then we help them take care of those, and then they're fine. So if, if they're feeling depressed, or lost, or lonely, or frustrated, and everybody goes through that, I would say, some time in their life, the angels can help them with that. Now, where does this term come from? Well, we're looking it up because we we had to we look up the dark night of the soul. I mean, I've only seen references to it on social media where people are saying, "Oh, I've started my dark night of the soul. Can anyone give me some helpful tips to get through it?" And I'm like, "Well, what is that?" And as I read through it, and they talk about how all of a sudden you realize that you are a soul, basically having a human experience, is how it is put then they start to get into all these different emotions that go along with releasing their beliefs that they had grown up with basically and and so then they go through this depression from what i've read and that didn't make sense to me because i never went through that but we looked it up so we're going to talk about that now what the dark night of the soul really is and where it comes from. Where it comes from, right. It's more like it. Mm -hmm. So where does it come from? It comes from a saint of the Catholic Church, a priest of the Catholic Church, named Saint John of the Cross. He was alive back in the 1500s. Right, and one of the things he did was, he's known as a poet. Mm -hmm. and, he wrote uh, books and poetry. Well, and the thing is that apparently, the way he thought about things was a little different than the way the Catholic Church thought about it. Yes, things. yes. It's really what happened. Mm -hmm. And you know how that goes. If you think differently than what the Catholic Church is saying, you're in trouble already, right? Yes, and they imprisoned him. Exactly. And so while he was in prison, he started writing these poems. Mm-hmm. Right? And one of them happened to be called... The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight. And right? it's all about the soul and what the soul experiences when it is on its path toward really, um, how do you put it, not becoming one get, with God, but yes, getting yes, closer no, to God. He, did, he, did you write that? To become, to become one union with God. One, in one union with God, right. that's the word, yes. Mm -hmm. So as you're developing your relationship with God and, and going through this process, you wrote that there are two parts for this dark night that take place, that takes place, and it's a purging process. And in the first one, um, the the soul is going through a purging of sensory, emotion, things the like that. The, right, more the physical side, and then part two is the spiritual part. And now, what does that sound like with the work that we do? Don't we tell people the same thing? We do. Right? But, <laughs> it's like but, an onion. Right. Layers of things will come off. Okay, but it's not even it all two starts parts. With he mentions two parts, but mm -hmm. we know that if the masters mentioned to us, how many parts are there that we deal with? Oh, four. Four. Mm -hmm. All right, we deal with the spiritual, the mental, mental. the physical, and, and the, the emotional. emotional. There are four bodies. Mm -hmm. All right, so he talks, he writes about two, but we deal with four. Right. And that's how we get individuals, and we help individuals to manifest the best version of themselves. Which sounds to me like it's exactly what people are talking about. Yes. Well, it shouldn't be a surprise to them that they're a soul. I mean, we could have told them that to <laughs> tell us, you know, you're well, a soul, okay? Have some people don't understand the whole scope of it, you know? But they send them to one night division. Uh, so that's why we don't have terms. You know, it's just whatever we're taught by SAD Masters, that, well, that's what we deal with. Mm -hmm. And nothing's ever been told to us about, oh, there's a dark, what? Dark night of the soul. Dark night of the soul. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, the poem was called Dark Night. Yes, the so Dark Night. The that's line, the name of the poem by St. John of the Cross. Exactly. Somewhere along the line, someone changed it to Dark Night of the Soul. Mm -hmm. But it was a poem that he wrote with what he was experiencing while he was in prison because his cell was so small, they said he couldn't even really lie down. Right. And by the way, it's the Catholic priests 
that imprisoned him in the monastery, wherever he was. Right. You know, just Italian, us Catholics, man. We, need to <laughs> we have an interesting history. Yes. <laughs> you know, Oh, by the way, for those of you that might be wondering, he did escape after nine months. Yes. He got out of there. <laughs> he did escape. He got out and he, he was able to um, take a lot of his writings and be able to establish, uh, what do they call houses. them? Houses. Houses, different houses uh, over wherever he traveled to. Mm -hmm. Around the world. And to help people. Right. He was a Carmelite priest or a Carmelite friar mm -hmm. at that time. And he, he died in the late 15, like 1591, some of that when he died. Um, but again, that's where this whole term comes from. And it's nothing but you purging. You know, you going through that growth process. I don't think it's as serious as people think it is. Right. Or that it's such a big deal as people make it out to be. Without guidance, it's probably a big deal because then you do feel lost and you don't know what to do. Right. There really aren't any tips to give somebody. No. Because this is just you dealing with your karma. Now, a lot of individuals that I've seen write about this talk about how they get very lonely because they've had this, as the term goes, an awakening as to who they really are. And now they're going through this process where they're purging and their family doesn't understand, their friends don't understand, and they can't talk to anyone about it. And so they, that's where the loneliness comes in. But we're here to help. We understand. Not only that, but then if they understood why they're going through it, Mm -hmm. It also makes it easy for them to relate with their family members. Yes. They're thinking they're going through it and their family members or their friends don't understand. is because they don't understand themselves. Okay? But it's, a, it's something that's very comprehensible. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it can be explained if they watch some of the videos that we have. I don't know which ones they will watch right now, but I know that some videos that can explain some of these things to them, or when we help them with the healing process, mm -hmm. they start to understand, okay, this is why I'm going through this. This is why this is happening. And then as things happen, it makes sense to them. Everything starts to make sense. In the beginning, it doesn't, but because in the beginning, we just do clearings, right? Right. We don't explain much. So when people ask us, well, what did you find? Uh, we didn't check. <laughs> we don't look for details at the beginning. Exactly. To get you started on your, your journey to get you toward being balanced. Right. But mm -hmm. as you continue to work on yourself, and then we help you work on yourself, then we start to spend more time on more details, and then you start to see results faster. But it does take time to get there for some people. Mm -hmm. Right. So. I don't know if that explains or if that answers the question about dark night of the soul. I believe it does. I think we covered where it comes from, where the term and the name, the dark night of the soul, comes from. And um, hopefully it will help individuals understand what it is that they're going through. No, how, they, how, how did it help with that, with them understanding what they're going through? Uh, because of what we explained about what St. John of the Cross wrote, about how it's a purging process. Okay. So I think that in itself is helpful because some people wonder why they have to go through that or and they don't really grasp the whole concept of it's just a cleansing to help you move forward and grow. Well, it's not just a cleansing, you know, mm -hmm. you're balancing karma. So they have to understand what karma they're balancing and why at this time and how do they know what to expect next. And that's where we come in. That's where we can help them with that. I believe that's where the confusion might be because they don't know you know what to expect they don't true. know why it's happening very true mm -hmm. while we can explain to them why it's happening we can give them guidance we give them the tools to make it easier to deal with mm -hmm. make sense it makes sense to me now in the book nine faces of christ where there, there's a this uh, uh i'd say disciple not disciple of jesus right right but a, a student that went through that process and he had two mentors with him and they left him because they knew no. for a whole year. Exactly. And they left him alone to go through everything he had to go through. Because he kept telling him, you know, let's move on, you'll be fine. But he's like, mm -hmm. oh no, I'm depressed and right. I miss home and all this. And he didn't understand that, you know what? Here are these two mentors guiding you. Just listen to them. They've been there. And say, okay, but you remember, you can't force anybody to do anything. Mm -hmm. It's their free will. So they said, we'll come back after a year. And they left him. And sure enough, after he returned, and uh, he made sure he was ready. He did. <laughs> because he's like, I don't want him to leave me again. Um, why do I bring that story up? Because we're the same way. We operate the same way. We're here to help anybody that wants help. Mm -hmm. But if you feel that you're not ready 
to listen to the guidance that you get, then uh, you're more than welcome to leave until you feel like you're ready. You can always come back, we'll hold it against you. Right. But uh, sometimes people are not ready, mm -hmm. you know, because it's not an easy journey, especially what we talk about. Because, we'll, you know, up front, sometimes the guidance can be tough. It can. And it's hard for people to handle. And if they're already in a dark place, but even darker, uh -huh. they probably get mad at us like, how dare you tell me that? Anyway, so does that answer the question? I believe it really does. Time? I think it yeah. does. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank yeah. you very much. Remember to subscribe and like this video. Join the Facebook group 190 Vision to connect with others on the same journey. Get help by visiting our website 190vision.com. Support the 190 Vision mission by clicking on the donate button which is at the bottom of each page of our website.